Yes, he's mad. I do so love custard. Or was it mustard? We removed your brain. Do you comprehend, commie animal? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. Vivisect me, please. You think I don't know? I'm crazy, I sound. Of course I do. They made me just to torture me. The things you do with our body are suicidally dangerous. You're a monster. A deranged monster. This video is about one of my favorite appliance personalities in Old World Blues, the book shoot. But it's not just about the book shoot. In order to find all of the recipe books we can use with the book shoot, we need to visit 13 different locations. So while this video is about the book shoot, we will be visiting many different side locations in the crater, each of which has their own fascinating lore. This story starts in Higgs Village. If we go into house number 104, which belongs to Dr. Klein, on his desk, we find sink project book shoot. With the holotape in hand, we can head back to the sink and install the holotape by activating the book shoot. Ah, good day, citizen. Library processing unit 232.7 is online and ready to eradicate sedition. Eradicate sedition? Of course, citizen. That's my duty and sole joy in life. All those books from before the war, full of seditious, treasonous, complicated thoughts. Just dump them in and lickety-split. I'll have them pulped, scrubbed clean, and pressed out again clean and white and sedition-free. So you make blank books? What's the point of that? Blank books are better for the mind, citizen. Real science by real men in lab coats has proved that introducing outside thoughts confuses the brain. Blank books encourage the reader not to question, but to blindly and zealously accept what's put in front of him. Also, I suppose you could use them to keep a journal. But those books are our last legacy of the time before. You can't destroy them. Citizen. That sounds dangerously seditious. If my reindoctrination module was installed, I'd take care of that for you. Sadly, that system was cut for budget concerns, so you'll have to perform your own indoctrination. Now, to begin with, you'll need a cage that can fit over your head and a sack of mole rats. Oh, sounds fun. Maybe later. Uh, can you do anything besides processing books? What good is eradicating sedition if the malcontents have ready access to the means to make more, citizen? I could also process pencils and clipboards. Wait a moment. Pencil processors offline? Pencil processors offline? Apologies, citizen. It seems traitors have absconded with that module. If you can find a backup copy of the module, I will happily eradicate your ability to create seditious literature. All right, blank books. I think I can find a use for those. Now you're thinking like a citizen, citizen. To make blank books, the book shoot can use any kind of pre-war book, including the damaged, scorched, or destroyed ones. We find these in abundance all over the world. A great place to go for these books is Higgs Village. Each of the scientists' homes is filled with all sorts of burned books. To process them, we take them back to the book shoot in the sink. Greetings, citizen. Ready to receive seditious materials. And then choose, I have some seditious material for you to process. Fantastic, citizen. Just input your quantity of seditious material on my interface, and in no time at all, I'll have you a beautiful, clean book. Won't that keep you happy and docile, citizen? With that, we get the option to process books. The book shoot rifles through our inventory and removes all destroyed, scorched, ruined, and burned books. And in exchange, he transforms them into blank books. After one trip to Higgs Village, I was able to use the book shoot to create 106 blank books. So great, we've got blank books, but now what? What can we do with these suckers? 
Well, if you've been following along with this series, you'll notice that every now and then we stumble upon a recipe while exploring the crater. These recipes allow us to create new skill books that we can use to permanently improve one of our many skills. This is extremely valuable because theoretically, if we find enough ruined books and use the book shoot to turn them into blank books, we can craft enough books to raise every single stat we have to 100. It would take a whole lot of time, but it is possible. Now, there are 13 recipe books in the crater, which means we need to visit 13 places to find them all. I've visited a few of them already, and I'll summarize the locations we've already covered, but I will explore in detail all of the other locations where we can find these recipe books. We find the barter skill book recipe in the Signal Hills transmitter. I covered this location in episode nine on the previous visitors here to the crater. To find the next recipe skill book, we need to head over to Z38 Lightwave Dynamics Research. Inside, we find a familiar sight for anyone who's played Dead Money. There's a big beam of light in the middle of the room, and we see flickering blue holograms walking around. This has got to be the place where the holograms were invented, the holograms that Sinclair purchased to provide security for the Sierra Madre. In the middle of the room, we find one active flickering terminal. The first note, requisition order holograms. If it wasn't for Sinclair's request, this hologram probably project would have been canned long ago. In addition to the dispenser tech he wants for the Sierra Madre, he spoke to the Big Mountain executives about using the holograms for defense? Question mark. That's something N.E. would have to sign off on. I can't even imagine the cost to turn the holograms into something beyond walking cameras and greeters. And why would you? It's only been a little while and I already hate spending my time with these ghosts walking around the plant. Rather see the research money spent on actually improving the field of view sensors or adding upgrades to the emitters. In the next one, Vera Key's hologram progress report. Spending a lot of hours getting the Vera Key's hologram looking right. I'm a physicist, not a sculptor. Iterating on her facial features and her dress to match Sinclair's expectations. I don't get the sense Sinclair's doing this out of love or, well, lust. Somewhere along the line, he became cold about the whole matter, as if crafting the hologram just right was something he hated. This scientist is incredibly perceptive. As we learned at the end of the Dead Money DLC, Sinclair was indeed not doing this out of love. We see that the scientists were hard at work. We find lots of coffee cups all over the place, scrap and glue all over the tables, and even a framed photograph of Vera Keys. If we go on over to the big beam of light in the middle of the room, we see a little flickering halo. If we try to activate it, we can take a Valance Radi Accentuator. But it only works once. If we try it again, it doesn't generate a new one. Heading up the stairs, we can go across a catwalk where we see a number of these holograms walking about. On one of the pieces of machinery, we find the holotape for the Energy Weapons Skill Book Recipe. We can leave going the way we came, or we can open a door on this top level of the catwalk to Big Mountain. This leads us to a platform just outside with a stairway that brings us down to the ground. To find the next skill book recipe, we need to head to X7A Left Field Artillery Launch. We find the artillery launch on a hillside. We pass a bunch of ruined trucks as we climb our way up, and these trucks were carrying a shipment of more of these Saturnite shells. This artillery launch is guarded by a unique sentry bot, RY589 Ultima Bot. This is another one of the many mini bosses we find in the crater. After he's dead, we can head in to explore. On his wreckage, we find a whole bunch of stuff. Scrap electronics, scrap metal, sensor modules, a lot of ammunition, and a lair. This will be useful for repairing Elijah's unique one that we found at Little Yang Z. The rest of you should try this intercom thing. It makes you sound like some kind of sky god. 
There's a lot to loot up here. We find a number of wrecked trucks. In the back of one, we even find a missile launcher. And as we explore, we find staircases that lead up to large elevated platforms. On one, we find a couple of lockers and a shelf filled with scrap. And we see large artillery cannons with circular concrete bases sticking out of the artillery field. For anyone who's played Operation Anchorage for Fallout 3, these should look familiar. They appear to be smaller scale versions of the artillery cannons used by the Chinese Chinese to attack Anchorage. Heading to the southwest, just beyond the wrecked fence, we find a partial skeleton next to a box and a duffel bag, and close to this we find another platform leading up to one of the cannons. Here we see some of the Saturnite shells just outside presumably the section of the cannon where they loaded these, but we can't interact with it in any way. Nearby we find a truck that has wrecked into the only building here, and next to the wreckage we find a door to the artillery command center. Inside we find some desks containers, and a whole bunch of ammunition boxes. We see the front of the truck has punched right into the wall and crushed a couple of corpses. But the reason we came here is because on the ledge of one of the large machines, we find the holotape for the explosive skill book. To find the next holotape, we head outside and scale the final platform. This leads us to a large console that we can interact with. We can choose Initiate Test Fire. And with that, we fire one of the large artillery cannons. We can repeat this as many times as we want. Now in episode 4, when exploring the X-8 facility, we found a destroyed town right in front of it. At the time, we speculated that this was one of the towns the scientists shelled during their experiments. Well, the existence of this artillery range, I believe, is evidence. Now that we just fired one of these huge cannons, I wonder if anything at the town has changed. So fast traveling all the way back to the X-7B Boomtown Target Zone, we find a few brand new smoking craters. In one, we find a footlocker, and inside the footlocker, we not only find an Atomic Valance tri rady Oscillator, a great new piece of armor that I covered in yesterday's video, but also the recipe for the gun's skill book. To find the next skill book, we need to head on over to X-13. I covered the X-13 facility in episode 7 of this series, but what I'm about to show you, I actually missed in that video. If we head deep into the facility and go to the stealth suit testing area, we can head on over to one of the observation rooms, specifically the reception observation area. You should recognize this room, it's the only one that had two of these little catwalks spanning one of the test areas. To find the skill book, we need to go to the end of the catwalk in the middle of the room. Next to it, we see an air vent in the middle of the wall. Taking a leap of faith, we dangle precariously on a near invisible ledge in order to loot the air vent. Inside we find cat eye, dirty water, junk food, and the recipe for the lockpick skill book. To find the next skill book, we need to go back to Higgs Village. Heading on into house number 103, this is Dr. Boris's house, we can go upstairs and on the table where we find the birdcage that has his basement key, we also find the recipe for the medicine skill book on the small shelf on the table. Now to find the next skill book, I need to introduce you to a giant canyon, the canyon that Dr. Klein referred to as a big red scar. It's easy to get lost in here, so I'm going to try and orient ourselves. Almost due west of the think tank is the Signal Hill transmitter. This is where Father Elijah established his first base after the attack at Yangtze. The Signal Hill's transmitter is perched on a rocky outcrop overlooking a giant canyon snaking throughout the northernmost part of the crater lined by glowing red crystal. Following the canyon southeast of the Signal Hill transmitter, we find the weather station that Ulysses went to, which I covered in episode 9, and just north of the Signal Hills transmitter is X-22. We'll be covering X-22 when we talk about the Biological Research Station. Just north of X-22 is a completely ruined building called the Y-0 Research Center. This is the most northerly location in the crater, and it's tucked in an easy-to-miss corner. This is where we find the next skill book. 
Following the canyon west, the north of X-22, we pass under a bunch of snaking vines and walk by a collapsed truck. We see a bunch of cages have spilled out, and we can leap atop these cages to loot a duffel bag on top of the truck. The canyon then turns east. And continuing east, we come upon a ruined building with two trucks outside. But first walking southeast of this point, we find half of a corpse next to a big book of science and a duffel bag. Turning around, we can take a lay of the land. We see two wrecked trucks right outside and something flickering to the northwest. Lying in some rubble is a still functional terminal. Inside, we find two items. The first requisition order dispenser. We finished up the design for the dispensers for the Sierra Madre Villa as requested. That big wig Sinclair went to the big mountain executives. He wanted emergency dispensers for his sheltered villa in case war broke out and they needed to care for the survivors there. He's done everything he can to isolate the community and tighten security. Now he just needs to guarantee a food supply and be able to ration out resources in the event of nuclear holocaust. I hear he even narrowed down the streets so cars couldn't come inside town, let alone come up to the villa. And in the next one, dispensing funding update. Got the funding from Sinclair. Near as I can tell, he's willing to not only bankrupt himself for these devices, he struck a deal with the big mountain executives, letting the villa become a lab for the supposedly harmless prototype tech here. I've seen the big mountain executives do this with other isolated towns, such as the Hopeville Meteorological Research up north, and the whole process, it's not what I signed up for. All of the wonders here at Big Mountain were the result of a symbiotic relationship. Sinclair had the money and the Big Mountain scientists had the talent. Sinclair made it possible for walking, talking holograms that can function as real-world physical security. And for all of the dispensers that Father Elijah so coveted that can generate practically anything, including food and water, simply by funding the scientists here. And in exchange, the scientists probably gave him a good deal when Sinclair agreed to allow them to conduct experiments at the villa, not only on the visitors there, but also upon the villa workers. Now there is a front door to this facility, but it's inaccessible. It must simply be too destroyed. However, to find the next recipe, we can leap up on top of the ruined truck just outside the door and then jump on top of the roof. Here we find a skeletonized torso next to a stack of stim packs, a duffel bag filled with ammunition, and the recipe for the melee weapons skill book. The next skill book is in Higgs Village in house number zero. This is Dr. O's house. We find it on the second floor, lying on top of one of the consoles in the middle of the hallway. Here we find the recipe for the repair skill book. The next one is also in Higgs Village, this time in house number 102, Dr. Mobius's house. We find the recipe for the science skill book in Dr. Mobius's bedroom, lying on a console on the ground next to the door. For the next one, we need to head back to the X-13 facility. While going through the stealth suit test, we find the next skill book hiding between two refrigerators in the fake Repcon office kitchen. On the ground, we find the recipe for the sneak skill book. Back at Higgs Village, we find the next recipe book in house number 104. This is Dr. Dalla's home. Heading upstairs, right next to her creepy mirror display with all of those teddy bears and mannequins, we find the recipe for this speech skill book lying on top of a radio beneath a painting. Next, we need to travel to Little Yang Z. Inside the very first tent to the right, we find the recipe for the survival skill book lying on the ground beneath a bunk bed. And for the last recipe, we need to travel just outside of Little Yang Z to the far western corner of the map. Here we find the entrance to the big mountain west tunnel. Attention! The bluegrass surrounding the dome absorbs all fertilizer, including fecal matter. This does not give you license to excrete on it. On the train tracks just by the main gate, we find a skeletonized torso next to a duffel bag, and we can crawl under this gate to enter the West Tunnel. Inside, we find a Protectron wandering around at the end of the tunnel. After killing him with a sneak critical, we can unlock an easy locked door to the right where we find a small storage compartment. Here, next to a bunch of containers, we find the recipe for the unarmed skill book lying on the ground. 
To finish exploring this tunnel, we can continue west along the tracks. We see a door to the north, and our perception shows us something moving beyond it. A Protectron Mark I. Unable to continue. We find ourselves in one big square room with a bunch of containers and scrap everywhere, and we see a couple of ways out. There's a door right next to the one we used to enter. This brings us back out to the same train tracks. Here we can loot the first Protectron we destroyed, and we find a couple of boxes and a filing cabinet. Heading back inside, the next avenue is through a hallway to the northwest. And patrolling this hallway is the unique mini-boss Protectron, the Custodian. Hostile target identified. Awful use of deadly force is in progress. Citizens are One of the things I love about the revelation frequency for the sonic emitter is being able to lock these robots in a perpetual state of paralysis. On his wreckage, we find some energy cells, some salient green, and a unique item, a primer and powder pack. Once we loot the pack, it opens up and we get a bunch of ammunition crafting supplies, including powders and primers. After destroying the custodian, we can head down the hallway where he came from, and rounding a corner, we find a room with another protectron inside. Opening a door to the south, we see that this room connects to the first one through a hallway. And so turning back, we can loot a bunch of scrap and a duffel bag. And leaning against the duffel bag, we find the auxiliary recharger chip mod for the lair, the L-A-E-R. Now we have both mod upgrades. Remember, both of these mods work with Elijah's version, which is unusual for unique weapons. When done looting all of the containers in this room, we can unlock a hard locked door to the northeast. This leads to another train track where we find a corpse with a Saturnite fist right next to an old ham radio. There's a first aid box stuck between the tracks here and a bunch of ammunition boxes at the end of this track. But this is a dead end, so we need to leave by retracing our steps. But we have to be careful because as soon as we leave, Leave, we get attacked by a Night Stalker. As we leave, we can loot two duffel bags that we find tucked between the rock to the northwest. Now that we have the final recipe, we can head back to the sink and craft any of these skill books from a workbench. Each of these skill books requires the same components. We need 25 blank books, two pieces of wonder glue, and then the recipe of our choice to craft a skill book. In this example, I'm gonna go ahead and craft a barter book. And when done, I get a copy of Tales of a Junktown Jerky Vendor in my inventory. Consuming it permanently increases my barter by three. As you can see, this can be very valuable for building our character. Now we can unlock additional features of this book shoot when we find its upgrade holotape inside Father Elijah's room at the top of the watchtower just outside Little Yang Z. We find the holotape leaning against a coffee maker. Once we have it, we can head back to the sink and activate the book shoot to install it. The book shoot can now transform pencils and clipboards into lead, spare parts, and duct tape. The next time we ask him to process some seditious materials, we have an option to process pencils and or clipboards. The book shoot can break down pencils into five lead and one scrap metal, and he can break down any clipboard into one duct tape and one scrap metal. Just like all other appliances here in the sink, the book shoot has random dialogue that he'll spout out as we walk around. Look out, communist! No false alarm. It was just a plate. The commies have eyes everywhere, citizen. And that means they're not just commies. They're peeping toms. If you haven't found any communists in your backyard, you're not looking hard enough. <laughs> I smell sedition. Citizen, did you know that communists have an organ behind their eyes that converts salt water into fresh? Or wait, is that penguins? If you know what the word proletariat means, do you know what that makes you? Well read and erudite for a communist. And if we install the book shoot, he gets the following ending.
the book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip, and the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of the book shoot and all 13 locations where we can find the skill book recipes. We are quickly coming to a conclusion of the Old World Blues DLC. In the upcoming episodes, we will discover and install the personalities for the jukebox, the sink, and the biological research station, explore the final remaining minor locations in the crater in order to get an achievement, and then we will confront Dr. Mobius in the Forbidden Dome. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week, so if you want to make sure that you don't miss my next video in this series, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a new shirt in the shop, folks. New California Republic. Now you can sport your NCR pride with the NCR logo on the front, and on the back we've got crossing service rifles with a trooper helmet and the words, patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winner. You can find the shirt in a variety of styles, shapes, and colors, and on mugs, smartphone cases, and a bunch of other stuff. You can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with episode 12.